Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. In today's video, we are going to discuss about Azure Table Storage. Uh, whenever you create an Azure uh, storage account, by default, you can see the options of having your queue, your Azure Table Storage over there. And today we are going to discuss on what is Azure Table Storage, uh, what are the benefits of using Azure Table Storage, what are the disadvantages of using Azure Table Storage, and what are the use cases in which we should go ahead and use our Azure Table Storage. When you talk about uh, Azure Table Storage, it basically implements a NoSQL key value model. So when I say NoSQL key value model, it actually stores your data in form of key and value. It has set of rows and it has set of columns, but it is not like your traditional table storage. It stores your data in a semi-structured format and each row is identified by a key value over here. The number of columns for each row might vary. So let's say your, uh, you know, the first row AA might just have two columns. Your the second row BB might have six columns. So the number of columns might vary for each uh, row. Unlike your traditional tables, it does not have, you know, any concept of relationships, primary key and foreign key relationship. It does not have concept of stored procedure or even index indexes. So data is usually in denormalized format over here. So let's go and see what is a use case, what is an example where you can actually utilize your Azure table storage. Let's say that uh, you are storing the data related to customer. You are trying to store a customer relate, uh, related information right, in a table storage. What happens is you have to have a key that, that might be your customer ID and the value uh, basically, the columns might have customer data. When I say it has customer data, it might have two numbers associated to a customer. It might have three numbers associated to a customer. It might have two addresses related to a customer, right? So those addresses, those phone numbers are actually stored in form of values in a column. So if your each row will have a unique identifier of a key, which is your customer ID, and all your data related to the customer will be stored in a single row which is unlikely to your traditional tables where you can you have multiple tables and you perform joins together the data from different different tables right in this case you have a customer id and all your data related to a particular customer is stored in a single row so this is a uh, you know a particular example of how your data is stored in a table storage and in which cases you are going to use it so basically here you do not need any joins because all your data is stored in one particular row only and that is why it is a bit faster than your traditional systems. So now let's go ahead and talk about partitions. So as you all know about partitions I have been talking about in my previous video even in Azure table storage your data is split in a table into different partitions. So partition is basically, uh, you know, you try to group together related rows based on some particular partition key. So let's say you want to group uh, the data related to uh, 12 January. And uh, so in that case, all your rows which are pertaining to 12 January will be grouped together. So it is easier when you uh, when you fire a query, it is easier for the analytic system to know where your data resides and it can quickly fetch your data from those particular partitions. So when you query the data using the partition key that you have already set up, your uh, query results are very fast. When you talk about the keys, right? Uh, as you can see over here, uh, as I explained, each row will have a key. So what this key is made up of? This key is made up of your partition key and the row key. When I talk about row key, it actually means that your each of this each row is uh, uniquely identified using this row key. So in this screenshot, which you see on my screen, I'll quickly zoom it. Uh, you can actually see the row key is pertaining to a particular time. So each row has the device data which is captured at a particular point, but the partition key is a device ID, right? So the device uh, one. So this is how your key is defined when you talk about your table story. So let's say you want to query your data in uh, uh, for device one at a particular time, let's say 11 one, uh, 
uh, AM, right? So it it can directly it your query will directly point to device one and the row key of eleven one to fetch the device data. And similarly, if you are trying to fetch the data for a particular window for a particular period, in the similar case, if you are trying to fetch the data for device two from thirteen. Uh, 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 4 a.m. till 13 4 uh, 29 so th this is just the difference uh, in seconds so in that case it will pull the batch for the batch of the values in that particular row key very easily columns that you see over here they can hold your string type your numeric your decimal all kind of data types it can store and each row can actually store your data up to 1 GB when you talk about these partitions inside your Azure table storage. So now let's move forward and see what are the benefits of using Azure table storage. So by now you people already know that Azure table uh, storage is basically schema less. You don't have to define a schema and uh, you know data insertion is quite fast because you do not have any schema to look up to. So data insertion is quite fast even uh, when you try to retrieve the data by using a query on which you define a partition key, even the data retrieval is quite fast. Also, it provides high availability in a single region. So I've already talked about this high availability in my previous video in Azure Basics. I do recommend watching that for in case you want to know more about the availability that is offered in Azure. However, there are some disadvantages associated to table storage as well. As you already know, it is a denormalized form and, you know, there is no referential integrity involved. You don't have any, uh, you know, foreign key relationship, primary key foreign key relationships. That is one of the drawback of Azure table storage, but not essentially a drawback because we are trying to store uh, um, semi-structured data over here. At the same time, if you are trying to filter out the data using a non-key column, when I say non-key column, if I go back, so this is the key that we have defined, right? And this is the key, this is the partition that we have defined. So if you're trying to query the data, which is a non-partition column that will actually involve your full table scan. How that I've already explained that this is how it works. It goes and it checks the partition key, it checks the row key, and then it fetches the value. But since you have not defined any partition key or row key in your query, in that case, it will not be able to scan your data to the exact point. In turn, it will give a full table scan and then fetch you the results. Now let's see what are the different use cases of your Azure table storage. So whenever you have terabytes of data that you want to uh, store, uh, you know, which can uh, which which can be used your web scale application where you want to quickly identify, uh, you know, the data using your kind composite key. In that case, you should always go for Azure table storage. Also, you can actually store the data sets, uh, those kind of data sets in table storage, which do not require any kind of complex join foreign keys or you know they don't require any uh, stored procedure so basically a denormalized data set where you can have a fast access also it can be used for you know logging and performance monitoring uh, purpose you you might want to capture your event logging or your performance uh, performance monitoring data in azure table storage why because that can be easily partitioned over let's say date you can easily partition your uh, data over date and you can easily identify it later as well, right? So that is one of the reason that you can easily uh, use as your table state storage for capturing your event logging. Also, in case uh, you have very huge volume of data, like let's say hundreds of terabytes, in that case as well, since Azure table storage will automatically manage the partitions inside, it will be quite easier to, uh, you know, store the data inside Azure table storage. So now let's go ahead, go to the Azure portal and we'll see how we can create an Azure table storage. So here I am onto the portal and you can see that I have a storage account already created. I'm using the storage account that I have already created. And on the left hand side, you can actually see these options of container, file share, queues and tables. So the, these are your Azure storage tables and these 
you you have to create your storage account first and in my previous video i have already shown how to create a storage account so i'm skipping that part and i'm directly moving on to this tables option over here so you have to go here in the table section and let's go and click on create new tables let's i'll quickly zoom in let's create a new table and let's give it some name let's say test t1 let's click on ok now you can see that uh, this table is already created now after creating this table if you go on the left hand side you can actually see the storage explorer right just click on that and then you will be able to see the containers the file shares the queue and the tables that you have in your storage account so let's uh, expand this and you can see that you have your test one over here right and once you click on this test one you can actually see this plane on the right hand side now you can go ahead and click on add option at the top and once you click on add you can actually see uh, these entities appearing over here so you can actually see that it is asking you to add a partition key and a row key over here right so what are this what is this partition key and the row key this is same what i have defined you in my discussion on partition so it is asking you to uh, tell what is the partition key what is the row key that you want to insert right so it, based on your data you can actually add your partition key and your row key and you can also add the property over here so you, once you click on this add property you will actually see that this row comes up over here so let's enter something by default let's say let's keep it as name and then again add a property let's say age let's put the name as bhavna let's put the age as 30 and then let's put a partition key as partition a and let's put the row key as row one now i'll quickly zoom out and on the on the bottom you have an option of insert just click on that option of insert and then you can see that your partition key your row key and your data has been inserted over here right let's uh, let, let me zoom out i hope it is quite visible now and now you can see that your table has a partition key of partition a it has a row key of row one that we have defined and timestamp just shows when it was added and then you have your name and your age which which are the columns that i have uh, added to a particular row also now let's say that you want to query it so if you see on the uh, this i'll zoom it again so if you see you have this query option let's go ahead and click on query so what you see right now is uh, basically the query condition so let yeah what by default it is taking partition key and the row key because it actually searches the data based on the key values right so let's keep it as partition a and the row one and let's add a new clause so in the new clause i will use the age right so if age is equal to let's say one because i have not put any data related to age equal to one and let's run the query and see what is the output so you can see that no data is available in the table where age equal to one so now let's put it as 30 and again run it and let's see if it works so now you can see it has given me the data of bhavna age equal to 30 because that uh, that was present so this is how you can actually query the data you want to edit it you can go ahead and edit it so these are the options available you can go ahead and add the uh, you know, uh, you, you can actually uh, change the order of the columns. Uh, your name, your age can come before your name. If you go to this column options, you have an option to do that. You can move it up and down in case you want to do it. So this is pretty much that I wanted to explain you in today's video. So I hope you understood it. And in case you still have any questions, do leave uh, your questions in the comment section. I'll definitely answer them. And thank you so much for being till here. Do remember to like, subscribe and share. Thank you so much.